but we have rapid urbanization. Across Africa, we're seeing about 3% urban growth per year and only about 1% on average rural population growth per year. So population growth is very much focused in, in, in the urban areas. We also, since about 2000, much unlike the previous two or three or four or more decades, we're seeing a lot of per capita income growth in, in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, obviously, we all know about the income growth that we're seeing in India and Southeast Asia and East Asia and so forth. So together, these two factors, the urbanization, the per capita income growth, drive two types of transformations in, in, food, consumption, in food consumption among consumers. So first of all, transformed patterns of demand. We're going to have much more consumption of perishable foods, so meat, dairy, fresh produce, rapid growth in these. And this has major implications for processing techniques and the investments that are needed, major implications for cold chains and how do we get cold chains into these systems, major implications for food safety, so that involves both private sector practice and public sector regulation of these types of things, and major implications for the human and institutional capacity to deal with these challenges. Also in the terms of transform patterns, we're going to have many more, much more demand for processed food with the good and the bad that comes with that. So for example, you, you need major private investment to, 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 to generate and to produce these foods, but there's also the public sector counterpart where you need food safety in, uh, 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 inspections and other types of things to go with it. You're eventually going to get much greater scale, which will conduce, contribute to reduced unit costs, increase purchasing power, and really drive the development process. But there's also a major negative externality, which the provost uh, referred to earlier today, and that's that this is a major driver of the nutrition transition. In much of Latin America, we've moved from too few calories to too many calories, too much fat, too much salt, and not enough micronutrients. An anecdote that I have is that I was in Ethiopia. We're doing a study of the impact of World Food Program's local procurement of food aid in a number of countries. And we interviewed a lot of CSB, corn soybean blend manufacturers, who were then uh, fortifying this corn soy blend for, the, you know, for, for delivery to people that really need good nutrition. And what do they do with their machinery when they're not producing that? They produce corn puffs, which are essentially vehicles to deliver fat and salt into diets. Okay? And this is the type of thing that's also going to be growing uh, as time goes on. Okay. Also, much, much greater demand for better quality, better and more packaging, better storage, especially coal storage, and, and food safety. So this, these types of things are very dependent on strong linkages, strong coordination across public, across private, across, across uh, with, with the civil society in there as well. Much more coordination needs to be happening to deliver quality and packaging and cold storage and food safety than happens right now. So in addition to transformed patterns of demand, there's going to be vast increases in the levels of demand. Okay? You're going to have fewer farm households that must feed growing urban populations. So a little bit of math here. As, as the urban population share rises from 33% or one-third to 50%, okay, the rural urban population ratio falls from 2.1 to 2 to 1 to 1 to 1. In other words, every rural person is going to have to produce at least twice as much food okay, to serve these urban populations. Of course, there will be imports and so forth. But in fact, they're going to have to produce more than two because of the grain intensity of meat and, and, and so on and so forth. And this kind of move from about a third to about a half urban populations occurs, is occurring now and projected to occur over a total of 30 and, and, and not more than 40 years in sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia and Southeast Asia. So this is pretty rapid uh, types of change. Demand is going to double every, two to four, every 12 to 14 years. And you know, the market, transport and marketing infrastructure is already dramatically inadequate in many of these places. If you go to Nairobi, Wakulima Market, at least until very recently, was the only purpose-built wholesale market in the city, and it was built in 1967, has not been expanded since that time. So you've had this flourishing of chaotic wholesaling activity going on elsewhere around the city, and that's the norm in many of these places. So these are the dynamics that are going on, and, and, and to, to some extent, 
they, they, are, they have their own momentum and they're going to be happening, okay? So what needs to happen in response to these are transformations, you know, these three transformations that I talked about at the very beginning, post-farm distribution channels, uh, factory markets for farm production, technology and scale at farm level. We need transformations in these levels to respond to these changes that are going to be happening. Um, and then we're not going to get those types of transformations without transformations in human skills and the institutions that produce those human skills, so thus Megatrend 3 <clears throat> as part of the global center. So it's really in this area where we have the challenges for research and innovation, for public and private investment, and for policy.